These are the Golden Adventures of Brett Hall, a three-issue comic book miniseries published in 1994 by the Patrick Company as a cross-promotion with McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and Ronald McDonald House. The comics star Brett as himself in a fictional action-packed fantasy that shows him transported from the St. Louis of 1994 to the futuristic St. Louis of 2094 to help the St. Louis Blues win the Stanley Cup. It's comic book action as Brett must adopt to the brutal hockey style of the cybernetic slashers or see if he has the character to win the old-fashioned way. It's a science fiction, sports, hockey, superhero mashup to which you probably say, not another one of those. <laughs> oh yeah, another one of those. That's what I'd call it anyway. And I'm qualified to get a vote after all. I wrote the darn things. Hi, I'm Walt Jashik, a.k.a. Walt Now, writer at large. And I was tickled pink, or maybe tickled blue, to be invited in 1994 to serve as head writer on this series, The Golden Adventures of Brett Hall. In this video, I want to give you a little bit more of the backstory, talk about branded entertainment, which these comics were. Though they have a real story with a three-act structure, of course, they're also branding vehicles for the partners in the project, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Ronald McDonald House, and of course, the St. Louis Blues themselves. The books were originally sold, shrink-wrapped like this, for 99 cents at St. Louis area McDonald's with the purchase of a value meal. And prior to their release, Patrick and company created quite the ad campaign to announce the books. I want to show you a pretty big budget TV spot they created starring Brett Hull himself, recreating some of the drama from the comics in live action. I teased some of that footage at the beginning of this video, but I want to show you the whole 30 second spot with the original audio. Imagine you're watching the blues in 1994 and on comes this spot. His record is unmatched by any player in the league. But now he must face his greatest challenge in a game that gives new meaning to sudden death. What does the future hold for Brett Hull? Find out in the golden adventures of Brett Hull comic books from McDonald's. Just 99 cents with any extra value meal purchase. Get yours now. Because once they're gone, you won't get another shot. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Pretty cool, huh? Brett Hull could act. It was an exciting time, 94. Let's talk about the creative team on the books themselves. I was thrilled to join a team of creators that included from the agency, Bob Hawthorne and Bill Camper. I'm listed as the writer with my friend Brock Hankey helping out on issue number two. And from Hinkle & Company, penciler Don Secrease renowned comic artist, been around for a long time, created Colt. The inkers were Bill Lux and Rick Burchette of DC Comics fame, inking here under the pseudonym Jim Riley for then contractual purposes. The letterer was Terry Hinkle of Hinkle and & Company, and the colorist was Johnny's Flying Mouse. We will see all of their work up close in this video because I'm going to take you through all three books and try to explain the story to myself and others. And if you haven't seen this, or if you haven't seen it in a while, get ready for quite a journey. You can also turn me off and just read the book quietly at your own pace. That's probably how I do it. Well, without further ado, let's take a closer look at The Golden Adventures of Brett Hall. And off we go with the first issue 
of Golden Adventures of Brett Hull, number one of three, Slapshot to Destiny. That's a Bill Van cover of Brett Hull, number 16 in action. And this is the issue famously containing the hologram image of Brett Hull himself. As we turn the page, we have an ad on the left inside front cover for Ronald McDonald's children's charities. The beneficiary of some of the proceeds from the book. And then the story begins. It is a plop you right down in the action sequence of a blues game in progress. We deliberately don't see Red Hall until we see his 16 in the lower right corner of page one. We turn to the double page spread that reveals Brett Hull, wham, boom. It's slap shot to destiny. And the credits as that shot is coming right at the viewer. We turn to see he scores. Darn, says the goalies. Five, four, three, two, one, honk. The crowd is cheering. The announcers are impressed. And then there on the right on page five, we have a very deliberately talky sequence of post-game shenanigans, starting with questions being popped at Brett Hall from all directions. One particularly mean-spirited reporter says, I have a question. Some people say you're not aggressive enough, not mean enough. Shouldn't you play with more intensity? Is his philosophy as work hard, play fair, and most importantly, have fun. We turn to the locker room itself, where we see practical Joker Brett Hall enjoying a little fun at his teammates' expense. He drives home underneath the St. Louis Science Center and says, ah, not a half bad day. At home, there on the right on page seven, we see Brett relaxing with a crossword puzzle. He is, like many hockey players, a crossword puzzle fan in real life. This page also establishes a thematic element to the story in which one of the answers to the crossword puzzle is the word character. Hmm, character, Brett says, thinks to himself. That's what the reporter was questioning me about today. Not mean enough, not intense enough, as if intensity only meant aggression. I wonder would that kind of change in my character bring a change to my trophy case? Would it put the Stanley Cup in the only space that's still empty? That's a rhetorical question this story is going to attempt to answer. As we turn to the next morning, Brett goes through his rituals of the day, arriving and then to get dressed around the edges of this spread. And through the middle, we see that he is being watched on a monitor by someone mysterious who seems to believe that Brett Hull needs to be crushed. This is, of course, some foreshadowing from the story to come. Then the puck is dropped. It's a face-off. Clack, quack. Brett thinks I got a funny feeling about this game, some major weirdness written all over it. Shake it off, Hall. Action ensues there. Page 10. Looks promising at the top of page 11 when Brett suddenly takes it on the chin, catches air, does the fandango, spills to the ice, out cold. Next spread, pretty trippy, as a warmth passes through every molecule of his being, and Brett is awake. Mama, get the number of that truck. You see, he's confronted by this character, Dragoon, from the Slashers. But when 
Brett reaches out to protect himself. His hand goes right through the stick. On the top of page 13, it's a hologram. He says he's either dreaming big time or I've beamed up to the Enterprise. Where am I? Where am I? Isn't it obvious as a stranger? You're in the future. The future, right? Like I believe. Whoa, says Brett as he sees himself in a giant floating hockey stadium above the St. Louis Riverfront. Continued in book two, Power Play 2094. We have hull lights there on the right page, a text page we also contributed about Brett Hull. Everything you want to know about Brett Hull. On the final spread, there's a crash course on hockey. As a writer, I had to study this to know what I was writing about. An ad for some blue noteware, and finally, a Coke ad on the back cover. That's issue number one. Which takes us to issue number two, Power Play 2094. We open to Brett taking it all in. He's in St. Louis in the future. We're moving. What is this? Crenshaw, the coach, explains they're in the new Gravikeel Center and that Brett has been summoned into the future by their technology to help the Blues win the Stanley Cup. To do so, Brett will have to face the creature you see there on the right-hand page of the spread. That is Dragoon of the Slashers, the ultimate cybernetic hockey player of 2094, a brutal defense machine. Brett does not like the sound of this. As we turn to the next spread, Crenshaw is showing Brett video of what happened to the Blues previous right wing when he faced Dragoon. No time to take it all in though, because on the right page, Brett is attending a press conference in which he's being introduced for game seven and Dragoon crashes the party. You have no chance against the slashers. Dragoon says, Dragoon, an overgrown action figure. And Dragoon proceeds to trip on pieces of the monitor he broke on the previous page. And Brett congratulates Dragoon on defeating a podium. On the right page, we cut to Von Drax technology. Von Drax is the owner of the Slashers. Here he's on a video conference call with Crenshaw of the Blues, talking about what's at stake in the upcoming game. He then turns and gives some instructions to Dragoon to crush Brett Hull and his spirit. The next morning, the Blues practice. Crenshaw instructs Hull and Stone to take some live shots on goal. Stone does so, but passes it in a weird way. Hull says, I'm over here. Yeah, but you weren't on your spot. My what? You mean you passed to a spot instead of the man? Well, our computer simulations tell us the best spot to shoot from. That's ridiculous, Brett. Says you score when you read the goalie's moves and adjust. He demonstrates, makes a goal, goalie stops it, that's Alex the Wall Walters. Fast glove you got there, Alexander. Brett is corrected. It's Alexis. Alexis. Right. Got it. Well, this is the future, eh? Hey? But is there any place good, he asks, for lunch? At two McDonald's. They were a co-sponsor of this comic book series. And this is, of course, product placement. There's Brett with his teammates at McDonald's 
using French fries to break through and score. Yeah, it works with French fries. But can you do it, Alexa asks, on game day? We see on the right, game day, that each team prepares in its own way. New arbor, deadly. New skates, a little stiff. New optoscope, unbeatable. New uniform, I like it. Slashers win at all costs or else. Stay loose, have fun, and let the winner of the blues. Stanley Cup to the loser. Annihilation. Fans gather for the start of Game 7. Everybody's too frozen in their spot. Brett thinks they're still too tight. In seconds, the slashers score mercilessly. With each play, Brett sees what hockey is truly like in 2094. The game turns ruthless, more brutal. Gotta trick this guy, Brett says. What, are you off your spot, Hull? Now you see it. Brett whirls around. Dragoon, now you don't. Arg! Says Dragoon, but this is brutal. So on page 14, time to score. Boom! A blow to hit Brett's shoulder, and he crashes hard. Wham! Cut to Drax. Job well done, my pet, he says. Job well done. Continued in book three, Sudden Death Overtime. On the right, we have a Q&A with Brett Hull. In this issue's Hull Lights. And then there's a Brett Hull cross-check crossword. Crossword puzzles are a hockey tradition. So appropriately, here's a crossword puzzle about hockey. A few more house ads, Coke ad on back, that's issue two. Issue number three is the conclusion to the trilogy. It's titled Sudden Death Overtime. The cover portends defeat for our hero, Brett Hall. As the story opens, the readers are disoriented by a strangely upside down shot. As he is disoriented himself. Gee, Mom, do I have to get up if the bus doesn't leave to 80s? I'm obviously delirious. Sorry, Brett, says a voice from off. You're in no condition to go anywhere. Brett is informed by Dr. Glenn in there, the blues doctor, and she is in our cybernetic rehabilitation facility telling Brett that his shoulder is shot. She informs him that there's only one way to get back into the game with cybernetic augmentation. Obviously something standard in 2094. You want to turn me into a hockey vending machine like those metal heads on the ice? Only if you want to play. Heck yeah, I want to ow, says Brett. And on the right, the slashers continue to terrorize the blues with goon tactics. Dragoon charges, scores. The score is now three to one. Slashers lead. Von Drax is in his glory, thinking the cup is as good as mine. Brett back on the gurney. Sees the cup slipping away and has to relive his fall there on the replay. Number 16 is down, the announcer says. And Brett thinks 16 is down, 16 down, 16 down. That's that word again from the crossword. See book one. The word is character. Brett thinks about that word. The sum of a person's qualities. Course. That's the question. Do I have the character to get up off this table and win the cup my way? Or do I do it their way and become one of them? There's just one answer. On the right page, the blues are confused. Why can't we connect? Maybe it's like Hull said. Yo, lighten up there. 
Brett says, I'm back. There he is in his Blues uniform of 2094 with no artificial additives or sweeteners. He says, what do you say? Let's go have some fun out there. out on the ice the action starts anew let's show these goons something new stone says now you're talking top of page six there whole scores and scores again the game tied three to three going into overtime you're playing great out there blues crenshaw says at the top of page seven you fools take hull out, Von Drack says, or I'll have your circuit boards. Well, sure enough, the brutal slashers pin Brett to the boards behind the net. And there's no way he can shoot, let alone score, from back there. Then, as if time shifts to slow motion, Brett sees an opening. Stone understands and banks one. Brett drops barehanded and blasts the puck, which soars through space and nails Dragoon Bone and bounces back through space and into the goal. He scores! Amazing! Blues win it, Blues win it with a hat trick in overtime for Brett Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the Stanley Cup champions of 2094. Unbelievable, Brett thinks, but Von Drax says unfathomable. Dragoon is shorting out. Don't you dare overload, you cybernetic baboon. Don't you dare. Shabu! Zamboni machine, there's some trash on the ice says Coach Crenshaw. And by the way, if you ever want to visit the Stanley Cup, you're not welcome. Not welcome. Not welcome. Shut up. Celebration there at the bottom of page 12 in the Blues locker room. But Brett can't get too worked up. He says this has been an adventure and a half, but he has some unfinished business back in the previous century. So on page 13, they're going to send him back to 1994. Brett says, next time you want to zap me through time, call my agent first, okay? Go on, get out of here, says Crenshaw, I'm gone. Adios, man, says Brett. Goodbye, Brett Hall, says Crenshaw. Enjoy your destiny. On the final page of the story, we are back in 1994, what was then present time. And Brett is still mulling on the word character. That's what the reporter was really questioning me about. Do I have the character to win the ultimate prize, the Stanley Cup? And what's this, he says, a hockey card. It's his hockey card, a souvenir from the future. It's a hockey card from 2002 with career highlights. He looks at the card. Does it say the Blues won the Stanley Cup? Well, the reader doesn't know, but we can tell by Brett's smile that the card contains some good news. Brett's shadow falls on the trophy case where there isn't a Stanley Cup yet. The copy reads, your name is Brett Hall. You're in the moment at the moment. You've been granted a glimpse of adventures to be, but that's a story for the future. The story is dedicated to all those who work hard, play fair, and have fun doing it. Hall lights in this issue on the right, a scrapbook of Brett photos. There's a seek and find in this issue, just to top it all off. 
more house ads? Of course, a Coke ad. And that is book three and the conclusion of The Golden Adventures of Brett Hull, the three-issue miniseries from 1994. By the way, Golden has a few layers of meaning here. Golden has in arches, of course, but also in Brett Hull's nickname at the time, Golden Brett. A play on the nickname Golden Jet, bestowed on his legendary hockey-playing father, Bobby Hull. Both to their teams of different generations, solid gold. Well, thanks for looking at those books with me again. The writing is about 75% mine, I'd say. As with any advertising agency project, there was a lot of input from the other creators. That's very standard. And from the brands themselves. But a lot of my ideas and dialogue did survive. And what you see there, you can pretty much blame on me. I guess I'm happy that a theme is preserved. The theme of reaching down into one's own character to determine if one has the character to overcome obstacles. All well and good, but what are these comics worth? Let's talk about value for a moment. You'll see Googled, what are the Brett Hull comic books worth? I can tell you they're not in the range of Action 1 or Detective 27 or even Incredible Hulk 181. You can get the set for about 40 or 50 bucks in the aftermarket as of this date. I have an autograph set on eBay if you're interested in that. Autographed by the creators, that is. I do not have Brad Hull's autograph on a copy of The Golden Adventures of Brad Hull. Need to correct that before too long. And that reminds me. And if you're a company or organization or endeavor watching this video and thinking, hey, I we could use a comic book series. Listen, give me a shout out. My contact information is in the about section of my YouTube channel. I can get this band back together. Certainly I can corral a group of creators to do some branded entertainment in the form of comics, a great storytelling vehicle, which synthesizes the visual and the verbal. Slide into our DMs. And while you're up there, subscribe. I am Walt now. This is my channel of comics, comedy, and camaraderie. We look at comics up close. We create new comics in real time and have short comedy features with our original characters. If all of that or any of that sounds interesting to you, hit that little red button. And please leave a comment. Did you buy The Golden Adventures of Brett Hall from McDonald's at the day. Do you have them in your collection? Did you read them? Did you sell them? Any personal anecdotes you have regarding your connection to this wacko, obscure comic book series, of which I'm very proud, we'd like to hear it. Thanks for watching. I'm Walt now, wishing you a very comic day.